In today's video, we're going to look at a non-standard type of mathematical induction. And this is the last video in our series on mathematical induction techniques. So the idea is the following. Suppose you have a bunch of statements, p1, p2, etc., indexed by the positive integers. Now, unlike standard induction, we're going to assume the following. We're going to assume that the first m statements are true for some positive integer m. And then, suppose you also knew that if the kth statement was true, then the k plus mth statement is true as well. If these two things here are the case, then it's going to be true that all of your statements are true. And I want to show through an example with a particular value of m why that's true. And then we're going to see two applications of this, one to a pretty standard problem and another one to a very interesting problem. Okay, so suppose we had m equals 3, and we knew that these two statements right here were true, regardless of what k is. So first, we would know that p of 1, p of 2, and p of 3, the first three statements, are actually true. Then, if we apply this here with k equals 1, we'd get that since p of 1 is true, then p of 1 plus m, which is 4, is true as well. So, when we have this being true, we get this is true. Similarly, p of 2 is true means p of 5 is true, and p of 3 is true means p of 6 is true. So having these three statements here being true gives a cascading effect, meaning that the next three statements are true. And then we'll get the same thing for the next three statements, etc. And so all our statements are going to be true. So let's take a look at some applications of this. Let's prove that regardless of what positive integer n we pick greater than or equal to 8, that we can represent n in the following way, 3 times x plus 5 times y, where x and y are actually non-negative integers. Now I should mention, it turns out that because 3 and 5 have no common factors, that any positive integer can actually be represented as 3x plus 5y if we only restricted x and y to be integers. And this is a consequence of something called Bezu's lemma, and there's a video here that you can take a look at to see why that's true. But if we restrict to positive integers, you might not be able to express n as a sum of this form. So let's take a look at examples and see how our non-standard induction applies. So we'll start with the number 8, and we notice that we can write 8 in this form by selecting x to be 1 and y to be 1. Now we can try to do the same thing with the next few positive integers, 9 and 10. We notice we can write 9 as 3 times 3 plus 5 times 0. And then we can also write 10 in this form by writing it as 3 times 0 plus 5 times 2. Okay, so the numbers 8, 9, and 10 can be written in this form where x and y are non-negative integers. So what about integers that are larger than these? Well, we can think about creating a statement, p of n, that declares that n can be written in this fashion we just talked about. So the fact that we can write 8, 9, and 10 in these ways means that p of 8, p of 9, and p of 10 are all true. So using our non-standard induction, if we set m to be 3, then what we can do is show that if we knew the statement p of k was true, then p of k plus 3 is true, then we'd be able to get that any positive integer n greater than or equal to 8 can be written in this fashion. And again, the intuition is, if we have all these true, then this would give us that p of 11, p of 12, and p of 13 are true, then p of 14, 15, 16 is true, etc. So how would we go about proving this statement? So we're given that p of k is true, which means k can be represented in this form where x and y are non-negative integers. And our goal is to show that k plus 3 can be represented in the same way. If we keep the same second variable and increase the first variable by 1, the net effect increases the total value by 3. So k plus 3 can be represented in this fashion. And since x and y were non-negative integers themselves, x plus 1 and y will be as well. So we do get this implication. And so by our non-standard deduction, every positive integer n can be represented in this fashion, where x and y are non-negative integers, as long as n is at least 8. This is an example of something called the chicken McNugget theorem, or the postage step problem. We'll see more about that in a future video. Now let's look at a more complicated example of non-standard induction. 
In this example, we're going to prove that every positive integer can be represented in this fashion as a sum or difference of consecutive squares starting with the square of 1 up to the square of some positive integer. So to get a feel of this, let's look at the first few positive integers and see how we can do this. So luckily 1 is positive 1 squared, and so we're good there. We'll skip writing 2 in this fashion for a moment and go to 3. Now notice that 3 is 2 plus 1, which can be written as 2 plus 1 times 2 minus 1. And so we actually get it written as a difference of squares, 2 squared minus 1 squared. And so we can represent this as minus 1 squared plus 2 squared, which is in the fashion that we want. Now these other numbers are a little bit more complicated, but we can give these things a try. So here we can take 1 and then add 4 to get 5. If we subtracted 9, we would get negative 5. And so we can negate all of these coefficients to get 4. And so there we have 4 written in the fashion that we want. Now for 2, we can take some inspiration with what we did with the number 4. We'll subtract the first few squares. That gives us negative 1 minus 4 minus 9, which is the total of minus 14. And so if we add 16, we get exactly 2. And that's a representation that works for this number. Okay, so we're able to write 1, 2, 3, and 4 in this fashion. So I've kept the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 right over here so that we know that we can write these in this fashion that we described. Now the idea behind our induction is to take an expression like this and recognize that if we can write a number like this, then we're going to have to add in tail terms to adjust somehow. So if we can find a way to add in tail terms after this k squared that actually add up to a constant, then we would be happy in knowing the type of step we'd need to skip in order to use our non-standard induction. So let's look at the squares of some numbers just larger than an arbitrary number k. So here are the squares of the next four numbers after k. And we notice something interesting about them. If we take a look at these intermediate coefficients, the coefficient of k in the expansion, they follow a pattern. They go 2, 4, 6, 8. So we can balance these out. The 2 and the 8 add up to the same as the 4 and the 6. So if we added these two and subtracted these two, these quadratic terms would cancel each other out, and so would the linear terms. And we'd be left with 1 minus 4 minus 9 plus 16, which is itself 4. So anytime we have a number that's written in this form, if we pad it with this sequence of expressions at the tail end, we'll be adding a total of 4 in general. But we know that the first 4 positive integers can be written in this fashion. So if we use m equals 4 in our non-standard induction, that's the way to go using this series of expressions in order to pad for induction. More explicitly, if you had n written in this form, then padding this expression here with this tail term here gives us an expression of the same type, which actually equals n plus 4. So we have our first four positive integers represented in the way we want. And then if an arbitrary positive integer n is expressed that way, we can find a way to express n plus 4 that way. And so by our non-standard induction, we actually have that every positive integer can be represented in this fashion. So there we go, a really cool induction technique that can be used in different problem settings whenever you have a fact about positive integers that you can extrapolate for positive integers that are a little far away from them.